Welcome to the Overflow Worship Podcast, where we serve and support leaders so you can serve and support your local church. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Overflow Worship Podcast. I'm your host, Andrea Olson. Thanks so much for joining me again today. You know, I'm not going to waste any time on my intro here today because you're going to want to hear this conversation. I am so excited today to have Ryan Dahl from Praise Charts. He's joining me all the way from British Columbia. So, Ryan, welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. Well, thank you for having me. I forgot to ask you, Andrea. I don't know where you're calling me from. So how far are we away from each other? We are, I mean, not too far. I'm in Minnesota. So, you know. <laughs> I think some people say we share the same accent, you know, because you're kind of north in the Americas. So there you go. It's Glad true. to be here. Yeah, thank you. I was just uh, having a conversation with some people from Atlanta the other day, mm-hmm. and they were saying, well, your accent's not as thick as some Minnesotans, but we definitely can tell you're from up north. <laughs> yeah. I always find it funny when I go down south and someone will be like, Ryan, I just appreciate your accent so much. <laughs> And I kind of find that a little humorous. So no <laughs> offense to anyone that talks like that, but we all talk different. So we do. Here you go. <laughs> yes, we do for sure. Well, Ryan, I would love it if you would kick us off and just tell everybody a little bit about you and a little bit about uh, the ministry of Praise Charts. Sure. Well, before I go into the ministry, I think first thing just to get it off my chest and off the table is I, I became a grandpa for the first time. Last year, actually on April 12th, and here we are, April 7th, the next year, and my uh, son and daughter-in-law are literally like, it's it's all happening. It may have happened by the time this goes live, so we're that close. Super excited. I'm telling you, there is nothing like being a grandpa because... Of course, my granddaughter is like the most beautiful in the world. Yes, (laughs) yes. And uh, has a smile that could just drop anyone uh, to the floor. So I'm loving that part of my life. Uh, An interesting parallel is I actually, Praise Charts is now going into its 25th year. So when I started Praise Charts uh, in 1998, my second child, which is my daughter Lydia, was born in May we started Praise Charts in October of that year. So wow. I basically grew Praise Charts through the world of raising children. And in wow. fact, a lot of how Praise Charts is designed in its back end is an overflow of a guy who's wanting to figure out how to do life and ministry and marriage and family mm-hmm. and and not collapse, you know, under the weight of it all. Mm-hmm. So Wow. Praise Charts became like a beautiful vehicle over the years. I was able to explore the freedoms of working in different environments. I have worked in coffee shops, in motor homes, in offices, in my bedroom, everywhere. It's just, I've taken it everywhere, you know, wow. and figured it out. So wow, it's been fun. That's amazing. That's yeah. incredible. And and what a journey it's been. I mean, I don't I don't know but a, what my perspective is from the resources you all provide and yeah. you know just how it's it's kind of a a household name in the church world of yeah. w- of resources, which is incredible. Yeah. Um, it's kind of surprising to me because I don't know. I'm just like in my world, I don't know all the people that use praise charts. It's a bit surprising when I go down south, especially in the deeper south and east of of uh, the states where there's a lot of churches and, mm. you know, Texas or Georgia or Florida or whatever. And I'm like, oh my goodness, all that stuff I'm doing up in, you know, southeast, western Canada or mm. northwest in Vancouver, BC is actually impacting a lot of people. It's It's amazing to think so. Yeah. Fun. Wow. <laughs> only only God, right? <laughs> right. He takes us as in our willingness and in yeah. our in our fear and <laughs> everything in between. So that's yeah. amazing. Fun story about my like my earliest years. I so it, it started in nineteen ninety-eight, but by two thousand and four, I I just had kind of got to the place where I could um, you know, muster enough to not have to have a different job. And I just did praise charts full time. 
And it dawned on me that I could do it anywhere. So that was huh. like the motorhome thing that I just brought up is we literally rented out our house, bought a motorhome, and I took my four kids who were like from two to six. Wow. We traveled, I think, 27 states and provinces just visiting music pastors because I wow. wanted to like see and touch and talk to people that were, you know, logging into the site. So, oh, wow. yeah, we did that 15 years ago. It was a tremendous life-shaping experience for us as a family and and the business. It's part of our story. So, yeah. Wow, that is absolutely incredible. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's it's so cool because the the resources that you guys are providing are an extension of you actually being on the ground, like yeah. in churches. It's not just like, well, I mean, I think I need this, so I'm sure other people do too. Yeah. It's like you did all of this ministry research and um, just field work, yeah. which is, that's oh, incredible. Yeah. That's amazing. And I can empathize with you on the small children in the camper. We, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, when we uh, when I go into churches and do workshops and that kind of thing, we bring our RV and park it in the church parking lot. Oh, no way. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah. And so we started two and a half, three years ago when our youngest was like one and a half. And so, you know, it's, it's tough having the little ones in the RV. <laughs> oh, for sure. I mean... Yep, there was a lot of lot of blankets, a lot of pillows, lots of oh, I have this like one memory of I'm driving the RV and I got my four kids in that center console and my wife on the side, and we're all sharing a Diet Coke together because it was like we just needed a little refresher, but some of those <laughs> pictures because now all my kids are grown and you know married, another one's getting married this fall, my another daughter. The daughter who was born in 98 is traveling Europe right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, my youngest son is in university. So it's like I've I've kind of done the journey. Now we're restarting it again mm-hmm. with grandkids. And um, yeah, I like to be in a place now where I can kind of pour my heart and life into what I'm still doing at Praise Charts, but have a little more freedom to be around or, mm-hmm. you know, we go to the lake together or do some different things family type things that's all very important to me and yeah. uh, in my life in this season so yeah. yeah yeah that's that's amazing and what what memories you made that you will treasure forever but what memories you will make yeah. that you will treasure sure. in the future too yeah so this is this is amazing i would love it if you would uh maybe tell everybody just a little bit about some of the things that you know, in light of COVID, in light of the last two years, the things yeah. that Praise Charts has done to to maybe pivot or add new resources or some yeah. of the things that maybe people who just hop on Praise Charts, they grab, you know, what they know mm-hmm. and then hop off. Maybe they don't know that they're there. Yeah, sure. Well, I think maybe to start, I'll just say and confess that when when COVID did happen, and I sort of call it like March uh, around 20th, I had just gotten home from, I was on the road for almost a month mm. at a music publisher's convention. And and then I went to this other conference and then I had gone to Disneyland with my youngest son and my, so we just kind of got home from this trip and we're ready to rear into the, you know, Easter season that was ahead, which is always a really great, strong season for Praise Charts. And then I can like remember the Thursday when I felt like I was falling off of a cliff and not knowing what was going to happen. And uh, it was like terrifying hmm. because I I haven't even invested my full self like this. I don't do anything else. I don't mm-hmm. have other side gigs really that I, I'm just like all in on on Praise Charts. And when you see something like that, suddenly it's like slipping through your fingers. And Mm. at the time, none of us really knew where this was going or what was happening. And, and, uh, and so it was kind of scary and terrifying. I went into sort of protective mode almost a little bit and is like, uh, almost like triage mode. That was the, Mm. the mode that we went in as a company. And we had to think, okay, remember we came up with like red light, orange light, green light plan. We were like, if it's The worst case scenario, here's who we're going to have to let go. Here's the products we're going to have to drop. Here's we'll sell the office, you know, all these kind of things. And then if it was the orange and we like literally had 
spreadsheets that that charted the path for exactly what it would look like if we were in each of those zones. And I think it's like we sort of hovered at the bottom of the green light zone. So we never actually had to let anyone go. Wow. But I definitely knew what we had to do if things, I mean, you you can't exist on nothing. Uh, we are a business, right? So yeah. we had to yeah. like still pay bills and and uh, but it was it was scary and terrifying, and I didn't know. I mean, sure we have faith, but I didn't really know what it was going to look like yeah. uh, going forward until a couple of months in, I started to catch wind as I was looking at like graphs and trends and things like what's happening, where are things going. I could start to kind of project, and I thought I think we could just barely hang on if we could just hold out. This will eventually, it was, it's like driving through a tunnel. Eventually we will come through the other yeah. end. And so that's kind of the mode that we went into for what I thought was going to be a couple of months. It mm -hmm. ended up being a couple of years. We took a, a, a big deep dive for sure as a, as a company, but just decided, okay, well, like, what can we do? We got to be creative here. You know, music isn't selling. So what else can we do? Can we invent, I invented some new product types. Uh, I, I uh, invested a little bit into our home studio. You can see, like, I mean, we always mm -hmm. have had this office, but I got a nice camera and some screens and lights and stuff. And we started a YouTube channel. I do interviews just like what you're doing. I mean, I love doing this. You probably can tell I'm taking over your show. I'm no, I well, that's why I love it. That's why <laughs> I'm here. I want to hear about Fraser's yeah. and you and everything. Oh. And, and the nice thing, too, is I wasn't even necessarily thinking, OK, what can we do to scrape together and make extra money? It was I was more thinking, how can we just still be around when we're through this? Because uh, I was even doing things that we were planning to give away, uh, like our, our YouTube channel. It's like we don't charge a membership mm -hmm. to come into it. It's just it's free. It gets our name out. We just want to be there and be around. And I knew that we could kind of survive. Um, so. I'm always thinking, COVID or not COVID, every time I lead worship or play music or I'm in a band setting or whatever, I'm taking stock of what are the charts we're using? How did they get delivered to us? Um, what mm -hmm. key is it in? What's the progressions? How does this look? How could I make praise charts make this even easier? So, mm -hmm. yeah, I was a part of a service uh, like, I don't know, six or eight months ago, and we had music on an iPad. And I mean, they weren't even using praise charts, charts, but I could tell they were, it was like their arrangements weren't great, <laughs> but somehow we made it through. And I just went home and that week on Monday, I got to the office and I started thinking, okay, I'm going to make this a bit better. Mm -hmm. So we invented this thing called stage charts. That was one of my little creations huh. where it's like stage charts are just the chords only. They're not the not the melody, not the rhythms. It's just, I know the song. I just need to know it's a one, four, six, five yep. on repeat. And then it goes into a one, two, seven. Sometimes that's all a musician will need to right. cue them in and go, okay, I know the song. I just needed to re remember that little thing. So yep. I have literally personally made like 250 or 300 of all the top songs. I made these charts and uh, we're just giving them away for free still, even to this day. And I love that people from India or the Philippines or Russia and America and Canada can get those. They translate into any language, of course, because there's no lyrics. Yeah. And uh, and so and the trend line I was just looking at, it's like it's upwards. You know, it started down here and every week more and more people are downloading those. And I kind of find it fulfilling to be able to run like the sort of the engine of praise charts where we sell chord charts and orchestrations and choir sheets and that, that all runs so that I can explore and experiment and give things away and help people out or do things for free. That let's just be honest. It's more, it's fun to mm -hmm. be able to give out, you know, when you're sitting on a, on a solid foundation. So, mm -hmm. so that's that. But the, the, the core of praise charts, I'll just give you a little inside scoop yeah. as to like, here's what we do, if anyone's wondering, is we have developed really close relationships with all the major music uh, publishers, the people that 
that basically administer the rights to the song artists and their songwriters. So mm-hmm. it's not necessarily the the Brandon Lake or the Carrie Joe. We don't. I like to get to know those people, but we're dealing with the people who shepherd their mm-hmm. songs. They're called yeah. the song copyright administrators, and so. Now we're in a place where they are feeding us music as they're releasing songs every Friday or sometimes Tuesdays. They're sending us music like the week before or two weeks before and letting us get an inside scoop on it. We start making charts and usually we'll make a chord chart and we put it out. It's just that's why you see in praise charts lots of songs just have a chord chart Mm -hmm. because we're kind of like testing the world to go, is there, do people want to sing this? Do they want it? Yeah. And we watch that like with laser focus because we're wanting to know what does the church want to sing. And and yeah. I can tell literally within a day or two whether it'll be worth making a, a lead sheet or a choir mm-hmm. sheet or a piano vocal. And then we'll release that and we'll watch. And then if that takes off, then I can know within a couple of days if we should orchestrate it or multi-track it. Mm-hmm. So when you come into praise charts, you're going to see like, Half the songs have one product and half the songs have two or three and some of them have a whole 27 or 51. Hmm. And it's just the nature of worship music. Some songs support just a massive expansion of um, different product offerings. So ultimately, we're trying to like just fully resource the best, most, you know, widely used worship songs um, in the world today. And um, and so that's what we're able to do. And it's just like a big conveyor belt, almost like, you know, songs get on the conveyor belt, they move through and, and every action, like if you ever download a chord chart, it, that information comes back to me compiled with 27 other people that might do the same thing. And that's how we follow what the church Mm -hmm. wants and uh, keep track of that. So, Hmm. and then I love the fact that different musicians need different charts. So like I might like a stage chart, you might like a chord chart, someone else plays the piano and they want to know exactly how to play the piano. Someone else plays the piano, like your Nord in the background there. I love Nords. Yes. (laughs) but (laughs) um, They might like a lead sheet, which is like, just give me the melody and the chords, I know how to fill in the gaps. So some people are like that, right? Yeah. Some people, if you play strings or if you have six trumpets and four violins and big orchestra, you need music for that. And yeah. I love the idea of turning a church orchestra into kind of a, a band that really fits with the sound of modern worship. Mm-hmm. And so we're really trying to pursue that sound that like that. If I could say this, I just, I don't want orchestras to sound too churchy. <laughs> do you know what I mean by <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> With all due respect, I just want them to sound like like they could have played for, uh, you know, a, a cinematic um, mm-hmm. movie show or something like that kind of epic sound. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, there you have it. There is part one of my conversation with Ryan Dahl from Praise Charts. Wasn't it fun so far? I obviously got to have the whole thing in one shot. And so I already know part two is incredible. So make sure you tune in next time for the Overflow Worship Podcast to hear part two. You've been listening to the Overflow Worship Podcast. If you enjoy our podcast, please take a moment and leave us a five-star rating and a written review, which helps us reach more people. New episodes are released every other Monday. So until next time, thank you for listening.